The Osmo Pocket 1 is on the left and you can currently get it used for about $200 US. The Pocket 3 is on the right and it's $520 for the camera by itself or $670 if you opt for the Creator Bundle. The text in the lower corners of the screen show you the settings for each camera and the word audio in red indicates where the sound is coming from. Both cameras can record at 4K up to 60 frames per second with sound. The Pocket 1 can record 120 frames per second at 1080p with a crop and no sound. The Pocket 3 can record 120 or 240 frames per second at 1080p and 100 or 120 frames per second at 4K, all with no crop, but also all with no sound. The Osmo Pocket 1 in my left hand is slightly smaller and lighter than the Osmo Pocket 3 in my right hand. The Pocket 1 has one microphone, which you can see right here. The Pocket 3 has a microphone on this side, on the back, and on this side. I'm gonna turn both cameras on at the same time and you will see the difference in startup time. And on the Pocket 3, there's an optional setting to have the camera immediately start recording when it turns on. And when you flip it back down, it'll turn off on its own. New to the Pocket 3, there is an attachment that comes with both the camera itself and the creator bundle that you put in the bottom right here. And that gives you a tripod mount on the bottom and moves the USB-C charging port to the back. If you get the creator bundle, the Pocket 3 also has a mini set of tripod legs that you can screw into the bottom. The Pocket 3 has a speaker just below the screen that you can use to review any of your clips and it gets surprised Loud. To control the Osmo Pocket 1, it required a separate attachment, which you would slide into right here. And to move the camera up and down, you flick this switch to the right and then use this jog dial. To move it left and right, you would switch this to the left and then use the jog dial. The Osmo Pocket 3 now has a built-in joystick and it works as you would expect. Up goes up, down goes down, left is left, and right is right. To recenter the gimbal, you double tap the menu button or the joystick button. To flip the gimbal around, you can triple tap the menu button or the joystick button. And on the Osmo Pocket 3, there is now a button on the touchscreen dedicated just to this function. And on the Pocket 1, if you had this attachment, you could also press this button to flip the gimbal around. To use the Pocket 1 with a phone, you had to have this separate attachment that you would plug in here. And then you could plug the entire unit into your phone like this. The Pocket 3 can be controlled wirelessly using the same DJI MIMO app. So right now I've got both cameras at approximately arm's length. The field of view on the Pocket 1 is 28 millimeters and the field of view on the Pocket 3 is 20 millimeters. One of my biggest complaints with the Pocket 1 was that the 28 millimeters is kind of restrictive. If I hold it at a more comfortable distance like this, it's a little bit tight on my face. And this is the Pocket 3 at 20 millimeters and you can see that there's obviously quite a bit more in the frame. Right now both cameras are recording at 4K 24 frames per second. Everything is set to auto and the exposure is at minus 0.3 EV because I found that the cameras tend to overexpose a little bit if you set it at zero. Face tracking is on for both cameras so the gimbal should be following my face. I have done nothing to the image in editing so what you're seeing is straight out of camera. Right now both cameras are on tilt lock which means that they can move left to right but not up and down. I'm attempting to walk as smoothly as possible to try and get an accurate representation of what the gimbals look like if you actually try to make it smooth. And now here's the same thing, walking at a brisk pace without trying to steady anything. And now let's do a running test, which is something that I do occasionally with this camera. The Pocket 1 has slow and fast rotation speed, and the Pocket 3 has slow default and fast. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but basically it's how quickly the gimbal will follow your movements. Now both cameras are on slow rotation. Now the Pocket 3 is on default and the Pocket 1 is on slow. Now both cameras are on fast. Both cameras can do 4K at up to 60 frames per second. The Pocket 1 can do 1080p 
at 120 frames per second. Pocket 3 can do 4K at 120 frames per second. I should note on the Pocket 1 at 4K 60, you lose face tracking. And at 1080p 120, you don't lose face tracking, but the field of view is a lot tighter. So you're gonna have much less in the frame. One thing to note is that the Pocket 3's autofocus is much more sensitive. It jumps to anything in the foreground very quickly, and you can see that in these shots. One thing I forgot to mention is that on the Pocket 1 at 1080-120, you keep face tracking, but you actually lose autofocus. On the Pocket 3 at 4K 120, it's the opposite. You lose face tracking, but you keep autofocus. Both cameras can do time-lapse, hyperlapse, and motion-lapse. Time-lapse is self-explanatory, it's just a typical time-lapse. Hyperlapse is a moving time-lapse, so we're gonna walk around and try to keep this in frame and then get a hyperlapse with both cameras. Both cameras have active track, which means once it locks onto your face, it can follow you around. It can almost do 360 degrees, but not quite. So each camera can go about this far. And then we can go the other direction. The Pocket 1 has already lost me. And the Pocket 3 can go all the way around this far. And the wind's about to knock both cameras over. Now we're just gonna walk at a regular speed. And the Pocket 3 does a very good job of keeping up. Finally, with the Pocket 3, you can actually adjust the amount of noise reduction and the amount of sharpening that the image has. Okay, we're now in my dark garage and both cameras are just still in their standard settings. The Pocket 3 actually has a low light mode and it also has options to set noise reduction to either one, zero, minus one, or minus two. Okay, the Pocket 3 is now in low light mode. In low light mode, you can't actually adjust the noise reduction or sharpening like you can in normal mode. So let's take a look at the low light footage and then let's compare that to normal mode with noise reduction at different settings. Okay, this is noise reduction at one. This is noise reduction at zero. This is noise reduction at minus one. And this is noise reduction at minus two. Okay, I'm now gonna walk around so you can get an idea of what the motion looks like in this low light environment. When we're under the light bulb, it's actually not too bad. We go back over here, it gets quite dark again. We can get an idea of what the image looks like in low light. Okay, now we're doing the same thing, only with the low light mode on the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 also does not seem to have face tracking on when you are in the low light mode. Okay, we are now in 4K 60 in a dark environment. Okay, now both cameras are severely backlit. So now we can see how both cameras handle that situation.
As I mentioned earlier, the Osmo Pocket 1 only has one microphone. The audio is currently set to auto and there's no wind noise reduction option. The Pocket 3 has three microphones and it's currently set to auto. Wind noise reduction is on right now and all three microphones are recording. There's also two other options, which is front microphone only and front and back. I'm now recording on front only and that actually refers to wherever the camera's at. So if I turn the Pocket, as the camera moves, it actually switches microphones. So I'm gonna keep talking here and you might be able to hear it when it switches. The gimbal just reaches endpoint. And then we'll go back, we'll keep talking until the screen is facing me again and the screen is facing me now. So when you have it set to front, it will always record whatever's in front of the camera. The third option is front and back. So if I flip the camera around, it should still have the audio being pretty good from behind the camera where I'm at right now. We can flip the camera around one more time. And as I flip the camera, I'll just continue talking because as I flip the camera, it should still be recording my audio even though it's gonna switch to the front, if that makes sense. So the Pocket One only has one microphone and it is on the screen side. So if I flip the camera around to the other side and then I talk from this side, uh, you can kind of get an idea of what the audio will be like if you're facing this direction. The Pocket One does not have an option to turn on wind noise reduction. There might be some built-in, I don't know. I've currently turned off the built-in wind noise reduction in the Pocket 3. Okay, let's run without wind noise reduction to see what the audio sounds like. Now we'll do the same thing again with wind noise reduction on. Now we'll do the same thing again with wind noise reduction on. If you get the creator bundle for the Pocket 3, it also comes with a wireless microphone. And if you turn it on, it automatically connects wirelessly. Okay, it says that it's now connected. And if I talk into it here, you can hear me. It comes with this wind muff, so that should be helping with the wind noise as well. Okay, and now I've got the microphone clipped to my jacket here, and you can get an idea of what the audio sounds like. Okay, now we got a nice breeze coming in from that direction. Okay, and that's it. Hopefully that'll help anybody else who skipped the Pocket 2 like myself. It's gonna be up to personal preference, but the wider field of view of the Pocket 3, I find much more useful. The screen on the Pocket 3 is a huge improvement, and especially the ability to flip the screen and turn it on, that is a genius idea. I was actually pretty happy with the picture quality of the Pocket 1, but the dynamic range and low light on the Pocket 3 is a noticeable improvement. Particularly in the sky, it gets clipped a lot less often on the Pocket 3. The gimbal performance on both cameras seemed about the same, which is to say that they're both great. Although I will say that the Pocket 3's active tracking is much better and much more reliable. The autofocus on the Pocket 3 is another big jump, although it's extremely sensitive. So if anything gets in the foreground, it's going to immediately jump to that. So that's something you'll want to keep in mind when you're filming, either to reframe stuff or make sure that you lock focus ahead of time. Which now that I say that, I'm not sure you can do that. The new sensor in the Pocket 3 looks much nicer in low light. Definitely a jump up from the Pocket 1. Don't expect miracles, but it definitely looks a lot more natural. And the ability to lower noise reduction is really nice because I would prefer to have a slightly noisier image and get more sharpness. Finally, the three mics on the Pocket 3 sound great, but I would definitely leave the wind cut on because otherwise the wind noise is way too much. The wireless mic is also fantastic, but I would definitely EQ it a little bit in post because if it's clipped to your jacket like this, it's gonna sound a little bit muffled. The only way I could get it to not sound muffled is if I actually physically took the microphone off and then talked directly into it. But anywhere clipped on a shirt down here, you're gonna get a kind of muffled sound, but you can fix that pretty easily with some EQ. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that was of some use to you. Affiliate links for both cameras are in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.